guys and a massive massive welcome to week three so as always if you haven't done already please make sure you've done your weekly weigh-in and just send that across to me so I always love to see you guys results so please do let me know how you're getting on how much weight you've lost whether you stay the same whether you've put on weight it doesn't make a difference just let me know how you're getting on and like I say I'm always here for accountability as well I really 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 want to know how you're doing so please let me know send me those weekly weigh-ins so as always, starting off with our cheers, challenges, and our future recommendations as well. So get your piece of paper out. So you need a pen, piece of paper, and what you're going to do to begin with, you're going to write two things that you've done really well this week. So what are you proud of? What things are you are you happy that you've done? Have you managed to do this week? Maybe you've managed to do the exercise challenge that set you last week. So maybe you managed to get to the either to the gym or you managed to do the home based circuits three times. Maybe you're stuck with having breakfast every single day. What have you done that you're proud of this week? So two things that you're proud of, either exercise or nutrition-wise. So pause this now and write those down. Okay, so you should now have two things that you're proud of for this week. Now what I want you to do is write down two things that you've maybe struggled with this week. So maybe you've had a party, maybe you've had a, maybe you've gone out for a meal, maybe it's been a friend's birthday, anything like that. Anything that you've struggled with, maybe you've struggled to find the time with the kids, anything that you've struggled with. So pause this now and write down two things that you've struggled with, two things that you've challenged with. Okay, so you should now have on your piece of paper two things that you're proud of, so two things that you're really proud of you've achieved, and then two things also that you've struggled with. Um, if you don't have two things, that's fine, but please make sure you get one thing down. Um, and now what you're going to do is you're going to write down what you're going to really focus on improving for this week. So in week one, I set you a challenge of having breakfast every single day, so you should still be doing that. So that's what I want you to keep focus on. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up every single week. Last week, I wanted you to go to the gym or do a home-based circuit at least three times during that week. So again, this week coming forward, I want you to have breakfast every single week, every single day, sorry, I want you to exercise at least three times this week, either a home-based circuit or get out, do your walk, go to the gym, whatever it is, and then what thing are you going to focus on improving this week? So maybe one of the challenges that you've faced, what are you going to try and overcome for this week? So pause this now, have a good think, think about what you're going to try and improve upon, and think about how you're going to do it. So pause this now and get that done. Okay, so on your sheet of paper, you should now have two things that you're proud of, two things that you've struggled with, so two challenges, and then one thing that you're really going to focus on improving for this coming week. So let's get started. So what I want to know, uh, on your shame piece of paper, you can flip it over or um, get a new piece of paper, whatever you want to do. I want to know what you currently drink during the day. So write down maybe morning, lunch, whatever times, what stuff do you drink? So obviously there's a load of stuff there. Do you drink Diet Coke? Do you drink Pepsi? Do you drink water? Do you drink fizzy water? Wine, alcohol? Everything that you drink on a regular day, please write that down. So pause this now and write that down. Okay, so you should now have on your sheet of paper a list of things that you generally drink pretty much every single day. Um, some of you it'll only be water, some of you it'll be um, carbonated water, fizzy water, some of you it'll be soft drinks, diet cokes, stuff like that, energy drinks, anything like that, please make sure you pop it all down. Because this week, what we're going to be talking about is hydration and the effects that having that being hydrated has on a weight loss. And I think this is one of the, if not the most important tips, because staying hydrated is absolutely critical for effective weight loss particularly in the long term and um, it's got so many benefits it supports proper kidney function so in terms of your health and um, but what also kidney function does is it allows the body to basically burn um, fat it allows your liver to burn fat at a much more efficient rate Water is pretty much involved in every single chemical reaction in your body. So it allows your body to function optimally, so it makes you feel better, it makes it easier for the body to mobilise and utilise the fat, like I said, makes the liver and the kidneys function better, but it generally just makes you feel better as well, because like I said, every single chemical reaction in your body pretty much requires water, so the more hydrated you are, the more your, your the, the easier it will be for your body to function and the more optimal your body will function. If you look at this, people don't realise how much water is actually in the human body. So if you think about your blood, your blood should be about 83% water, your kidneys 83% water, your, connect, your connective tissue 60% water, your skin, once you start getting hydrated, you'll start noticing your skin looks so much better and that's because your skin is actually 70% water. Even fat and bones are around 20% water. Your muscles 76% water and your brain needs water to function. So if you're dehydrated, you will not be even thinking as well as you could do if you uh, were fully hydrated your brain's actually 75% water, just shot 75% water. So looking at that, it makes you realise how much the human body actually uses water. Pretty much every single thing in you needs water and must have a certain level of water into it uh, to, to basically work at the level that you want it to and it needs to. 
And I always refer to it a bit like um, a car. You wouldn't go to the, uh, you know, you wouldn't go to the petrol stand, and rather than pouring in, if, if you've got diesel, if diesel car, you wouldn't pour in unleaded, and if you've got an unleaded car, you wouldn't pour in diesel. But more so than that, you wouldn't go to a um, uh, you, you wouldn't say, oh, my car needs filling up, and you wouldn't go and fill it with Coca-Cola or um, Red Bull or anything like that. You'd fill it with what it needs, and the human body is exactly the same. It needs water to basically work, work effectively. And if every day you're putting, you know, if you're putting in unleaded into your diesel car, eventually it might work to a certain extent, but it won't work as well, and eventually it'll break down and need and need basically a servicing. And that's exactly the same as what happens with your body if you're not putting in the right amount of of water to make it hydrated. So. Make sure you're drinking water. It reduces hunger. Um, that's all to do with basically chemical reactions in the brain. So it takes the brain about 20 minutes from eating and drinking to make it realize it's full. But what most people have is they have um, like the same sort of signals is sent when they're thirsty as when they're hungry. So what a lot of people do is when they're actually thirsty, they'll they'll think, oh, I'm hungry, and they'll eat food because there's water in food as well. Whereas what actually is the case is you need to make sure that you're having a drink first, take a drink of water, 20 minutes later, if you're still hungry, then you're actually hungry. But like I say, most people get confused and they're actually thirsty um, when they think they're hungry. It flushes toxins out of the body as well, so make sure that your body's working effectively, and again, make sure your kidney's working effectively, so that's how it does that. Like I say, it's pretty much involved in every single cellular reaction in your body. Um, joint and muscle lubrication, so when now that you're starting exercising, or if you've been exercising for a long time, it really will make exercising a lot better, and it'll make you feel younger too. Your joints will be more lubricated, your muscles will be a lot more lubricated, you'll be finding walking around and doing your general day-to-day -day stuff much easier, and that's also because it'll increase your energy levels as well, and that's due to, like I say, the body actually working working very very effectively so make sure you're drinking more water but I often get asked how much water should I drink or I say oh I have maybe a litre and a half or I have a litre is that enough um, and the answer is every single person needs a different amount of water and the, the recommendation that I always recommend is with an equation and it's 0 0.033 times your body weight in kilograms and that tells you exactly how much water that you need so with the example I always use a 70 kilogram man um, or female, 70 kilogram. If a person weighs 70 kilos, you do 0 0.033 times 70. And that's because that they weigh 70 kilograms, and that equals 2.3 liters. So what I want you to do is now pause this and do your calculation. So you do 0 0.033 times your body weight in kilograms. So pause this now and get that done. So you should now have your calculation um, and you should now know exactly how much water that you need to be drinking every single day. So 0 0.033 times your body weight in kilograms. So you might be surprised at how much that actually is. Um, or maybe it's less because often people say, oh, I've got to drink two litres per day. But a lot of people have to drink a lot more than that. So it really does, like I say, depend person on person. So this should be now your minimum target of, of water because this is how much you need to be optimised fully and hydrated fully. Um, <clears throat> Another variable of how much water you should drink is how much exercise you actually do. So for every hour of exercise, you should add an additional 500 milliliters of water. So again, if we take that 70 kilogram um, person, they should be having 2.3 liters of water per day. They've exercised for an hour, so they should now be having 2.8 liters of water per day. So it really does vary in terms of, depending on heat, exercise intensity is a massive thing as well. Obviously, if you're walking for an hour, um, you're not going to need as much uh, water as somebody who's jogging for an hour out in 20 degrees heat. Um, so every one is a little bit different. But like I said, ideally aim for that extra 500 milliliters while you can. And the reason for, for this and the reason it's so critical to drink while you're exercising and while you're moving is to help with cellular metabolism. So what I want you to think about is your body is like a sponge. So if you have a sponge and you have a bucket of water and you throw that sponge in, and you pick it straight out. There's water that's soaked in there, but if you got some uh, scissors and cut it down the middle, what would happen is the water would be, the, the outside would have water in, but the inside would still be nice and dry. Whereas if you dipped that same sponge in to a, 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 another sponge, same one, in a, in a bottle of water, in a bucket of water, squeezed it, what would happen is all that water would be then sucked into the core, and that's exactly what happens to you and your muscles when you're exercising and you're drinking water your body's moving your muscles are squeezing they're palpating and it's taking the water all the way in so you're increasing your basically your hydration levels at a cellular level as opposed to just sitting at a desk drinking loads of water and then having to go for a wee all the time so make sure if you are exercising which you should be or you're walking or anything that you're doing make sure you're drinking more water because you really do need to get it sucked in so now what you need to do is add on for exercise days 500 milliliters of water per day. So you've got your you've got your calculation where you've done 0 0.033 times 
times by body weight in kilograms. And now what I want you to do is plus 500 milliliters onto that as well, because that's what you're going to do for exercise days. So what I want you to do now, again, pause this. I want you to spend a bit of time, spend five minutes thinking about how you can drink more water. So a lot of people say, how can I drink more water? I don't like the taste of water. Uh, my general response is, what does it taste like? And they say, nothing. And I say, well, how can you not like the taste of nothing? But some people don't. Um, so what I want you to do, like I say, spend five minutes thinking about how you can drink more water. Maybe think about stuff that what you've done in the past. Um, maybe think about how you can incorporate it into your daily activities. Think about um, anything you can do to drink more water, basically. So spend five minutes now and um, write those stuff down that you can find ways to get more water into you. So you should have spent five minutes now taking time about how you can get more water in it. It's so critical to do this because, like I say, being hydrated will help you absolutely long term in terms of not only feeling better but losing weight too. So here's some tips from me. So I always make sure I have a glass of water first thing on rising. Um, so I, I put it next to my bed when I wake up um, and it's there for me straight away. And the reason I do this is because you lose a lot of sweat during the night and what this will do is it will replenish that. So think about sweating out there. The, the, almost the bad water within you and replenishing it with nice fresh good water and it'll normalize your appetite as well so remember like I said it takes 20 minutes for the brain to think it's full but it also some people get those signals mixed up so if you have your glass of water 20 minutes before eating you'll eat less during your meal because your appetite will be normalized so upon getting up have yourself a glass of water first thing um, if you're going to work every day, buy bottled water and take a bottle with you each day and aim to finish the bottle by the end of the day. So a lot of, uh, one of the tips I often recommend is basically buying like a two litre bottle of water and marking times on it that you're going to drink it. So do 10 a.m., 12 p.m., that sort of stuff. Mark your way down and make sure that you drink it through, through every single time. Because what I often see is people say they'll buy a two litre bottle of water and they'll get in from work and they'll be like, oh crap, I've not drunk any of it all day. And what they'll do is they'll stand there, take the lid off and they'll just down it as much as possible. And then they'll spend the next 40 minutes just going to the toilet all the time. So make sure you're having it throughout the day and spread out. So another tip is have a glass of water before bed as well. And again, this is to make sure that you, because you, obviously you lose a lot of sweat during water, but also normalize your appetite and it'll just make sure that your body's functioning perfectly while you're sleeping and give a chance to replenish. If you don't like the taste of water, which is often a common complaint, what you can do, there's loads of different things you can do. My favourite is I add um, fresh lemon and lime to give it a bit of a kick, to give it a bit more flavour. Um, what you can do as well is leave bottles of water by your desk at work. So this is a big one for a lot of people who particularly work in offices, stuff like that. Or if you've got a home-based office, just leave a couple of bottles of water next to your office so you've always got some at hand and, and keep it in plain sight so you know that you've got to do it because if you hide stuff, you won't drink it, or if you leave it in your, your bag when you get to work, you won't drink it. So get it out, put it in a prominent position where you'll see it, and then you'll keep drinking the water all the time. Um, like I said, going to the gym and exercising or exercising at home, it's very, very, very important to make sure that you're having enough water. So leave a bottle of water in your gym bag, and you can fill it up at the fountain or fill it up before, um, fill it up at the toilets, whatever you need to do, just make sure you leave a bottle in your gym bag so that you're always having water with you when you're exercising or you can get one of those if you go out jogging or if you go out walking you can get one of those water bottles now that you know they fit your hand ergonomically so you can literally hold them as you're jogging or as you're walking and um, often i get asked about other drinks because i say well you talk about water a lot of the time can i have other stuff as well um because some people basically just don't like drinking water and particularly when you're first starting to move into healthy living and healthy eating you'll have habits previously that are quite hard to break so one of the I mean, the biggest habits to break is stuff like a lot of people getting from work and they'll have like a glass of wine or a few beers um, on an evening or um, probably the hardest one to break is people who have caffeinated drinks such as coffees and teas and stuff like Coca-Cola as well. So Diet Coke and normal Coke. But it's simply a fact if you can switch these to water, you will lose weight. Because most of these drinks have negative side effects, not just how much they, they have in terms of the amount of calories that are in them and the amount of sugar in them, but also the fact that it messes with your body on a cellular level. So your body's not working optimally and your maybe your liver and your kidneys not working properly, so your body's not, not releasing the fat like it would do. So even though you don't like water, you need to find a way to have more of it. Um, or if you're just not in the right habits at the minute in terms of having your water, then you need to find a way that you get into that habit. So... Like I say, let's have a look at some common favourites in terms of pe in terms of what people generally drink, so that you can see the sugar content and also maybe have a look at some of the ingredients in there. So the biggest one and the most famous one at the moment for for adding weight and also the most famous drink in the world and the most popular drink in the world, except for in Scotland, is Coca Cola. So 
you can see the sugar cubes in front of there and it just staggers, it staggers me every single time I see it is how many sugar cubes are in there. So in a can of Coca-Cola, 330 mils, there is 39 grams of sugar. So you can see how many sugar cubes there is there. So one, two, three, six, eight, nine, nine and three quarters. And then you've got a bottle, so 500 mils, you can see how many sugar cubes. And then you've got a litre bottle, 108 grams of sugar in a litre bottle, 400 calories. And you get some people who drink two litres, that sort of stuff, every single day. Um, I, you know, I know a lot of people that drink six, seven, eight cans of Coca-Cola every day. And the amount of calories that are in them is staggering. So if you have a two litres of Coca-Cola, that is 800 calories alone from sugar, not just all the rest of the stuff that they add in. But what I always refer to it as is, let's say a can of Coca-Cola, someone brings you a can, 330 mils, um, that's roughly the same size as, as an average cup of tea. Imagine if they gave you a cup of tea with that, or a coffee with that many sugars in, what would you do? It'd be like drinking glucose syrup, wouldn't it? You wouldn't drink the tea, you wouldn't drink the coffee with that much sugar in, so why do you drink the Coca-Cola as well? And I do realise that a lot of people are becoming much more aware of the negative effects of coca-cola but what a lot of people do is when they keep a food diary or they keep it at the start healthy eating they'll be like oh well i'll just treat myself i'll just have this i'll just have that and they don't realize that like i say two cans of coca-cola per day is over 300 calories a bottle at lunchtime is over 240 calories of just sugar 65 grams so what's that 13 teaspoons of sugar 13 teaspoons of sugar in a bottle of coca-cola in a 500 mils bottle of coca-cola so like i say absolutely shocking so one of the best things to do if you drink coca-cola is just give it up again i realize it's going to be hard work and if you are somebody who has more than two or three cans a day you're going to have withdrawal symptoms from the sugar and you're going to have withdrawal symptoms from the, the caffeine as well so it can start to make you feel pretty much like shit so Start bringing it down, taper it down. So if you normally have two or three cans a day, just have one can a day. And then eventually what you can do is just completely knock it on the head and get rid of it. But I guarantee some people have lost stones and stones of weight just by not drinking Coca-Cola anymore. Energy drinks. Um, certainly Coca-Cola is the reason why there's energy drinks. Um, because before Coca-Cola, no one really added caffeine into it. And then obviously Red Bull is now the most famous one, the most prominent one. But now they're pretty much everywhere and everyone's drinking energy drinks. Um, and the amount of sugar that's in them as well is absolutely staggering. So you've got Red Bull, 250 milliliters, 27 grams of um, sugar, which is just short of six teaspoons of sugar. So again, which 250 mils is the size of a regular cup of tea. So if someone gave you a cup of tea with five and three quarters spoonfuls of sugar in it, you wouldn't drink it. So Rockstar, a lot of people now are moving on to <coughs> bigger ones, Rockstar, Monster, you know, the 500 milliliter ones. And they have 62 grams of sugar in. And when you ask Rockstar why they've got so much sugar in, they say, oh, it's because we've got natural fruit juice, fruit juice in as well. But 62 grams of sugar in a can of Rockstar, 208 calories. And it's just staggering how much it is. And people wonder why, you know, they, they like drinking these drinks because it makes them feel good. You wonder why. If I gave you 10 sugar cubes and dissolved it in water made you drink it, you'd have a crap load of energy and you'd be running around like a madman. And this is no difference. Not only have you got sugar, you've got the caffeine as well. But they're extremely dangerous. They're very, very addictive. So again, if you have any energy drinks, just knock them on the head because the quickest thing to do um, is just, again, taper it down. If you're having more than two a day, reduce it to one a day. If you're having more than three a day, reduce it to one a day as well. Uh, the worst client in terms of the amount that I've ever worked with was having 12 500 milliliter cans a day. Uh, which is a heart attack waiting to happen and what we had to do was it was pretty shocking I had to say to her can we reduce that down to six and then to three and then to one and then completely stopped but again if you're bringing this down you are pretty much dependent on them so if you're drinking them a lot a lot often expect to feel like crap for the first couple of days that you come off it you're going to have headaches withdrawal symptoms but keep drinking loads of water and get those toxins flushed out of you a big shocking one for most people is Ribena and I see a lot of people give these to kids and now when people are realising how bad Coca-Cola is, they're switching the kids to stuff like Ribena in the bottle or in the carton. And the kids are running around like mad people and they don't understand because they're not on Coca-Cola anymore. So how can that be? Because most people think of Ribena as healthy. They're very good at advertisement. It's got um, black currant berries on the front of the cover. It says 100% natural fruit juice, that sort of stuff. High in vitamin C. That's another benefit of it, apparently. But again, you just have an orange. But there's 50 grams of sugar in a 500 milliliter bottle of Ribena. So 10 teaspoons of sugar, which is the same on that pitch you can see as that amount of Oreos. So you wouldn't give your child that amount of Oreos, so why would you give them 
Ribena. So that's something to take in mind. And again, I see it quite often on food diaries. Um, people will write down what they're having. They'll say lunch, and they'll say sandwich, they'll say all, oh, they'll say low fat salad, chicken breast, this, that, and the other, Ribena. But what they don't realise is that really, Ribena has just done, undone all the hard work that they've done in terms of eating healthily. So it's something to take in mind as well, is how much sugar is actually in these drinks as well. Now, coffee tea is one I get asked often, um, particularly, again, for people who are caffeine dependent if they have a lot of coffees per day. Now, I always say make sure you're having one or two cups of toffees per day, per, of coffee or teas per day maximum. So that's what counts to your daily water intake. If you have any more than that, Due to a buildup of substances in your body, that'll cause a direct effect, so you'll start flushing water out of your body. So any more than two cups per day, and the caffeine content's too high, you're now flushing water out of your body. Uh, another key point to do with drinking coffee and drinking caffeine in the afternoon is it stimulates your body to release cortisol, so it increases your cortisol levels, which is your stress hormone. So when this is too high and you're stressed, it's impossible to lose weight. Not only that, it'll make you feel fatigued, it'll make you feel tired, and when the caffeine comes down and you start to crash, you'll either have more caffeine or you'll have sugar because you'll want to have more energy. So it's a vicious cycle in terms of getting into the afternoon and drinking tea and coffee. So make sure two cups absolutely maximum and no cups of coffee or tea after lunchtime. So that's to stop because like I say, if you have more than that, it actually leads to increased cortisol levels and when your body's stressed, the body will not burn fat. It's basically in survival mode and your body's trying to cope with this stress by holding on to all the fat it can have. So even though a lot, again, a lot of people will find out with this that they'll normally have four or five or six coffees and you're going to have to taper that down if you want to lose weight or you want to be healthy and you want to feel better. And again, this can make you feel a bit like crap for the first couple of days because you're having to taper it down by so much. And again, your body's going through withdrawal symptoms. Fruit juice. Um, again, very, very sort of varied in terms of people will recommend it. Other people say stay away from it. I think the key in fruit juice is all about moderation making sure you stick to the serving size. So on the back of the carton, it'll tell you 250 milliliters, and that's the maximum that you should have per day. It's got high amounts of fructose, um, and lots of studies have linked high sugar, high fructose consumption to a long list of problems. So if you're having a litre, two litres per day, it's just too much sugar, too much fructose. So the key with fruit juice is if you like it, no more than 250 milliliters per day. I, I'm a big fan of fruit juice. I don't have it with breakfast, but what I do have it is often after I've had a heavy weight training session so it's basically replenishing my glycogen stores. But the key with fruit juice, no more than 250 milliliters per day. Um, with all of the fizzy drinks, obviously I've mentioned Coca-Cola and energy drinks, that sort of stuff. Um, I get often asked about fizzy water as well. And my recommendation with fizzy water is simple. If you really, really hate water and you will not drink water under any circumstances, but fizzy water you can handle, then please drink fizzy water. Um, if you can, though, definitely stick to water because what carbonation does, it causes more dehydration. Um, most of them as well contain caffeine, which is diuretic, so you've got a double effect with that. And then most, I get asked like this all the time, diet drinks. Yeah, but I drink Diet Coke or I drink Coca-Cola Zero or I drink this and it's got no calories. But what it has got in is a sweetener, an artificial sweetener called aspartame. And that's the most complained about addition to the Food and Dietary Association. It's heavily, heavily linked to cancer. Um, they did a study with rats and what they did is, as they often do in science, is they basically put these rats and they laced the food, the, the, the food and water with aspartamine and they, um, so, so they, they split them in half and they had obviously one regular rats with um, no food, with, with food that was regular and re water, normal water and they had another set of rats that had the um, water laced with aspartamine and food laced with aspartamine and these rats that had the aspartamine um, flavored water and food chose to not drink and not eat and basically and, and they died rather than actually drink this stuff that's how bad it is for you that these rats knew that they would rather die than actually go out and do it and um, avoid fizzy drinks is my key point like I say the only exception is if you really really hate water and you need to have carbonated water to, to maybe ease you into getting into the habit of, of drinking water. But fizzy drinks, like I say, it's often something I get asked. They are carbonated, they often cause more dehydration. Alcohol. Simple if you can avoid it. It contains empty calories and it's got zero, zero, zero nutritional value. Your body can't start alcohol, so what it means is it must metabolize it right then straight away. And what that means is that you're using alcohol as energy, but if you're, as most people do, eat drink alcohol and eat at the same time that means that your body's then storing the, the your, your food as fat because you're using the alcohol to metabolize straight away so key thing with alcohol is again moderation 
I realise that there's times when you must have it, but the key is moderation. If you can go 12 weeks without drinking alcohol, I guarantee you will lose weight. Absolutely, 100%. Um, because it is, like I say, empty calories and it just adds on. But the key is if you do have to drink, if you're at a wedding or it's your birthday or something like that, your key is moderation. So females, two to three units per day and males, three to four units per day is a maximum. But again, key is moderation. Like I say, I always recommend for stuff like this is drink alcohol very, very, very infrequently. Now what I want you to do is because a lot of people get... Um, their, their water content and their hydration from actually from foods I want you to have a think so spend five minutes and think about what foods that you think contain high amounts of water so obviously I've stuck a watermelon on there so you should at least have one watermelon is certainly high in um, in, in, in water and it, the, the name should give it away but write down at least ten foods that you think are high in water so pause this now and write those down so you should have at least ten foods that are high in water and you should have written those down now. And let's have a look at some of them. So according to research, 20% of your daily water intake actually comes from food sources. So many fruits and many vegetables, such as, as I mentioned, watermelon, but also stuff like broccoli, tomatoes, actually contain 90% water or even higher. Um, so watermelon actually contains 92% water, 8% natural sugar. Um, so that's what pretty much compromises 100% of a watermelon. It's got essential electrolytes, it's got calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, all essential for when you're exercising as well. Grapefruit, massive fan of grapefruit, um, only contains 30 calories and compromises 90% water. Coconut water is actually compromised with 95% water as well, 5% coconuts. Cucumbers have got a massive 96% water content. And again, they're very much balancing good electrolytes such as calcium, magnesium, potassium and sodium. Strawberries uh, are, are contain 23 calories and are made up of 92% water. And celery, which is often the most famous one in terms of the fact you burn more calories chewing it than you actually do um, ingesting it. And that's because it's so high in water content and so few in calories because, like I say, it's pretty much almost entirely compromised of water. Um, so there's lots of different foods that you can be having to get your water content in. So try and make, make as much of your diet compromised of these things to try and get your water content. So if you're really struggling with drinking enough water, start adding these stuff to your meals and these stuff to your diet plans. And then just to summarise then, from week three, alcohol moderation is key. But if you want best results, please abstain from drinking alcohol throughout the full 12 weeks. Um, recommend drinking water. So you should have done your equation. You should now know exactly how much water you should be drinking per week. So 0 0.033 water per kilogram of your body weight. And that's to stay healthily hydrated. Um, for every hour of exercise, you add an additional 500 milliliters of water. So again, for that 70 kilo man, it's 2.3 kilograms, 2.3 um, liters of water plus 500 milliliters of water for exercising. Limit cups of tea and coffee to a maximum of two per day and make sure you're having them in the morning, not after lunchtime. Limit fizzy drinks. Um, if cutting them out is not an easy step, set yourself cut back targets. So if you're normally having, like I say, four cans of Coke per day, set yourself two cans. Um, eat a massive amount of quantity of vegetables and fruit as they consist of 90% water and limit those high fructose drinks. So again, making sure that with your fruit juice, it's all about moderation, sticking to your serving sizes and having no more than 250 milliliters per day. And this week's task, obviously, drink more water. Make sure you've done your calculation and make sure every single day that is the bare minimum of water that you're having. Keep having your healthy breakfast every single day and keep exercising. So keep doing at least free exercise circuits per day. If you've got any questions for food, please feel free to ask. If you send me your email, and again, if you haven't sent me your weight loss already, please do that. Any questions, please feel free to ask, and let's go ahead and smash this week. I will catch up with you all next week. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.